a great show for you tonight. Oh, wait till you see what we got in store for you. You know, because I have this thing about cheese, like really any kind of cheese, just love cheese. But mostly I love the, you know, the good ooey, gooey cheese, you know what I mean? You know, the kind of that cheese that just when it melts, it like stretches from the plate to your mouth, you know? And just thinking about that ooey, gooey cheese just wants me to get cooking. Yes. And speaking about cooking, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live. Oh, yeah, babe. It's melty. It's bubbly. It's ooey gooey cheese tonight on Emerald Live. Oh, yeah. Big, big show for you tonight. Unbelievable. You don't even, can't even imagine what we're going to be cooking tonight. You know what's on the menu tonight? Yeah. Ah, oh, more than cheese. I'll show you what's on the menu right now. This is a real cooking show, you see? I'm going to show you one of my favorite things. And not just in the spring when they come out, because nowadays asparagus, you can get them pretty much all year round. I'm going to show you a simple, simple asparagus tot with a little vacheron, which is a cheese. Oh, fantastic. Where do you see that? And then, have you ever wondered what else you could do with onions? Well, we have figured out a way. That's right. Roasted red onions stuffed with a mascarpone cheese. Oh, where do you see that? And then, uh, we've got a little surprise for you. Karen, uh... Karen's French harvest soup. Karen being our executive producer, but we'll get into that more later. Where do you see that? And then um, I like pot roast, different roasts. And I'm always looking for ways to uh, sort of kick it up a little bit with some accoutrements. That would be side dishes. <laughs> so a little mashed potatoes with a little cantel as a side dish. Oh, yeah, cantel being another cheese. Right. Fantastic. So are you excited about that? Yeah. Right. The uh, unbelievable uh, kitchen staff here at the Food Network and I uh, and Miss Karen decided that we were going to focus in on four cheeses tonight just to kind of get people a little bit more familiar with Gruyere, Cantel, Mascarpone, and Vacheron, okay? So those are the four we're going to try to get you to know a little bit better by the end of the show. First thing we want to do is uh, the asparagus. How big are they? If they're not pencil asparagus, those really, really, really thin ones that are maybe even smaller than a pencil, you're going to have to peel them. And generally about the halfway, three-quarter of the way mark, you want to get a peeler, you stop peeling them down, Cut the ends off. I save mine. Sometimes I put them in a zip bag, put them in the freezer. When I get enough of them, you can make a nice asparagus stock for like a risotto or something like that that's uh, just yummy. Now, the next thing. 
We want to uh, take our water. I'm using a pasta pot. It's more use than just pasta. We want to lightly salt the water. What that does with green leafy vegetables in particular is bring out the color of string beans, broccoli, and in this case, we're going to do the asparagus. So the tips are generally more tender. They take the least time. So I like to start from the bottom and steam the asparagus that way. Are you with me there? All right. So here we got the asparagus going. Now, when these get fork tender, the uh, best thing to do with green leafy vegetables, if you want to keep that color, especially with asparagus, when you take them out, you want to put them in an ice bath, which is called an ice bath, but basically it's water and ice. You know, I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> So that shocks them right away, cools them right down, happy, happy. Now, for this tot, I'm going to use some leeks. Now, these are big leeks. They're baby leeks. Basically, they're in the onion family. Let me just give you a couple of tips. I, the dark green part of the leeks here, I use for something else. Okay, I'll just put that aside. We're going to use that for something else. What I want to do for this tot here is use the tender part of the leek. The one thing about leeks is this. They grow and they are sandy. So what I do is I cut them in half. And uh, hey, we may get lucky here. This looks pretty clean. But what I do is I just put them, submerge them in water. If you kind of do the, uh, you know, the under the faucet thing, eh, sometimes you don't get all, all the dirt all the sand. So they are very sandy. Hi, this one's pretty clean. Hey, we got lucky. Huh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Must be our lucky day, Doc. <laughs> so uh, I like to rinse them real good and then we'll take them out. Then once I dry them, then what I want to do is I'm going to cut them sort of in, in about quarter inch circles like this. And leeks are absolutely delicious to use in chowders and soups. Uh, I like to, like in this tot, I like to use them because you get that great onion flavor, but uh, just a little bit more kicked up. All right, so I've got the leeks. The asparagus are in the, uh, in the hot water getting cooked right now. Going to cut all them up. The next important thing for this tot is you've got to have a custard. You can have any vegetable. You're going to have a pie crust. But uh, really, it's the custard that really makes the tot. Hello, Marty. Nice to see you. And... What I'm going to do is I'm going to have two eggs. I'm going to start with two eggs for this. And uh, love that. And then um, a little bit of cream. <laughs> Parmesan cheese. Oh, and I'd like some fresh grated nutmeg in there as well. Fresh grated nutmeg. Now, that wasn't so difficult, right? What we want to do now is we're going to get a little whisk, and we're going to whisk. This is what it's called. It's a custard. So our asparagus are cooking. We have a custard. I've got a pie crust, savory, in the ice box. That would be the refrigerator. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to cut some more leeks. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> Cooking with some ooey gooey cheese tonight. Can't wait to show you these dishes. Let's get started right away. I'm so excited. I'm going to take a little bit of butter in this uh, skillet right here now. And to that, I want to, uh, I want to add the leeks that I've cut up. And to that, we're going to add a little salt because, you know, got to wash the board, you got to wash your hands, you got to wash the knife, you got to wash the floor that you stood on to cut the leeks. 
You gotta wash the car that you brought the leaks home in. It's a cruel world out there right now. It's all these polices. So now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little salt with the clean hands. <laughs> I dry myself. Huh? And uh, a little pepper like this. Hmm. Might have to tighten up the old knob. Somebody's been messing with my knob again. It's not good. I'm serious. I had this thing full. You never, you, were you playing with this earlier? Not me. I'm not playing with any knobs over there. You were probably shaking it like a Morocco or something. All right, I'm, I'm going to just... We'll come back to the pepper. It's looking real good. All right, so look, to the leeks right now, butter, salt, pepper. Oh, they're so delicious. A little garlic in there, that'll help things. Now, when you're, uh, you could do this with a pair of tongs and take them out as like this when they're soft and into that, into that ice bath. Or you can just kind of do the whole shh. Ah, oh, feeling so good. <laughs> then out like that, just kind of in the ice bath. And we got to cool them up a little bit now. So we stop the cooking, we shock them, keep the color, and then the leeks are going. All right, now, you ever read a recipe for some tots or pies and it says blind bake the crust? You ever wonder what that is? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, basically what you do is you take your kitchen towel and you just kind of, <laughs> you want to not see anything, okay, basically. And then you try to find your way to the refrigerator to get the crust. All right, well. <laughs> and then you pin the leaks, uh, anyhow. <laughs> This is what that would be. And what I did is I had a raw crust. I put it in this tot shell. Why? Because it's easy to get out. Then what I did is I took a little parchment paper and I have some beans that I bake with. They have these marble things too that you can buy. I just used like red beans or whatever. In there, 350 degrees, 16 or so minutes, and it's blind baked. Now, that's perfect. The leeks are cooking. The custard's made. We're ready to put this thing together. So... First thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of the asparagus here and uh, don't want a lot of moisture in them. So I just take about half of them, just kind of get some of the water out of there like that. So too much water is going to separate the custard, so that wouldn't be good. So we're going to pat that like that. And then basically we're just going to take a knife, kind of cut them up in pieces like that. And then we're going to put this right inside the tot like that. Okay, beautiful. Have some left for tomorrow. Now, we have that. Now, you saw what I did. I didn't really have time because I was drying them. So they're just sitting there right now, vulnerable. This is the perfect time to season them because we didn't season them. So we just kind of season them with a little salt. <laughs> Fresh ground pepper. Yeah, thanks, Doc. <laughs> then the leeks are cooked nice and tender. We're going to go over with the leek like this. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you really cook. This is like a real cooking show. You know? <laughs> We're not flipping any birds over here. <laughs> now, you should let that cool a little bit, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pour the custard right over it, nice and gingerly. Then we're going in the oven. 350 degrees. 
You don't want to get it too high. You want this to cook about 50 to 60 minutes. The custard's going to just set up real nice. Now, you're probably saying, I thought he said something about cheese. Yeah, we are. For this, later on, we're going to come back to this cheese right here, which is a, a Vacheron cheese. And basically what that is, it's a soft, it's a rich cheese. And uh, sometimes a little stink to it. Love that. <laughs> oh, got to have that little perfume noir. It's made from cow's milk, and generally France or Switzerland. And uh, 45 to 50 percent milk fat. So they usually, you know, they use a lot of the curd to make this. And it can be served like this, you know, the little crackers, baguette, whatever. But it's also a great cheese for fondue. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of this when the tot... Ma'am, is everything all right up there? We can get you another seat if you'd like. Is he pestering you, ma'am? Well, don't feel alone. So this is a really wonderful cheese also for fondue. But anyhow, we're going to use some of that for our asparagus tart. After it's baked, we're going to put some of that on there, bake it, let it melt. Oh, delicious. Okay. While that's cooking... Let's talk about onions. Onions are a beautiful thing. I cut the ends off, then I make a little circle in here and take some of the onion out, rub with olive oil, salt, and pepper, and bake it until tender. So when the onions get tender, then I'll show you what we're going to do with them. Stick around. We'll be right back. Back in. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse here. All right, let's get down uh, to, the, uh, to those onions, right? Because you can do so many things with these onions. Sometimes I make like a little corn salad with a little tomato. I can stuff them in there. Sometimes I do some cream peas and I put them in there. Basically, what you got to do is you got to make a little bottom so that they can stand. And then uh, you can either take the top off now and roast them like such, and then you can clear them out. Then you just, just like a tomato, you're just going to make a circle, take it out. Preferably when it's roasted, because then you can use the piece here, chopped up inside of that. Speaking about chopped up, I got the chopped up onions. Our new cheese, mascarpone, which is a triple cream cheese, and uh, generally originated in Italy. It's unsweetened. Sometimes it's sweetened to use for a dessert, but uh, it's really fantastic. It takes on a lot of great flavors. So I'm going to add a little garlic. I'm going to add a little shallot, and I'm going to add a little thyme because, believe it or not, thyme <laughs> goes great with onions. So we're going to mix this all in. Anybody uh, use onions uh, other than pearl onions as a vegetable? It's really fantastic. I'm telling you. The red ones, there are a lot of these specialty onions now that are, that are coming out as well. They're really great. So, um, like I said, they're, the, the great thing about them, too, is that you can use them uh, and do them ahead of time. You know, you can really kind of stuff them with your peas or your corn or tomatoes or whatever. Uh, succotash I've done in there. I've taken zucchini and yellow squash and done that. I'm going to stuff these onions, okay? Then I'm going to bake them in the oven at 350 degrees. I think uh, our tot is smelling good. <laughs> when we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live Band.
folks. Welcome back. Oh, yes. Hey, if you're just joining us, I'm Emeril Lugasi. It's ooey gooey cheese night tonight. <laughs> All right. 50, 60 minutes. That delicious asparagus tot. <laughs> now, I'm going to turn while I'm here our oven up a little higher. Look at this, huh? Now, we're going to take that great French Vacheron cheese. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yes, indeed. So we'll put a little here, a little there, a little there and there. And uh, then what we want to do is we're going to put it back in just for a few seconds to, uh, to melt. All right. And I turn the oven up a little bit. Now, see those onions? Oh, yeah, look. See, we stuffed them with the mascarpone. The onions are already sort of, uh, they're already roasted, so they're sweet as it is. So while we're waiting on, uh, on that, Let's uh, sort of talk about this next dish. Our executive producer, Karen Katz. See, I got to tell you guys a little story before we get into this thing. You see, you know, we've been together as an Emerald Live team for a long time. Huh. Obviously, that's why we got what we got. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's been an amazing, amazing time to see the crew way back when to now. And how into food and into cooking just about everybody on the entire team is. I mean, they've come up with some great recipes on their own. As a matter of fact, just yesterday I was talking about this next recipe with our, as I said, our executive producer, Karen Katz. And uh, if you look at the monitor, take a look at, uh, listen to this. Okay, so uh, here we are uh, before the show. And uh, as you and I do every show, we go over the contents of what we're going to make, what we're going to shop, what we're going to cook for, how things are going to look. And all of a sudden, I see Karen's French harvest soup. So where did the inspiration for that come? Well, twofold. One is, how do I get Dan to eat his vegetables, number one. Number two, you always told me, with roasting your vegetables, I wanted to do it. I love onion soup, but I want to do something a little different. So we got a lot of root vegetables, a lot of other things. And, you know, wanted to kick it up a notch at home, which we do. That's great. And, uh, you know. The adobo sauce yeah, caught that, my eye. Well, that's, you know, you got to heat it up a little so bit. So it's kind of just like an onion soup, except it has a lot of vegetables. And we got the crouton and then the gruyere cheese and voila. That's it. All right. Yeah. Now i got to make it. I know. We'll see how good you do. Yeah. It's amazing because uh, we've done a lot of great things. I mean, we, uh, we've had cooking classes between shows. We've done a lot of amazing things are really touched with people. When you look at this recipe that I'm going to do now of Karen's, you'll see the inspiration of onion soup, but kicked up and done. It's really, really, uh, I think it's going to be truly delicious. Let's check on our tot before we're going to... Go kick it up a little bit. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yes. Can you smell that cheese? And how are our onions doing? Oh, yes, babe. We're coming back for them. So why I like this uh, tot thing so much, you know, these kind of pans, is because, you know, you got to let it cool, of course. But you see, they just kind of slip right out like that. And uh, they make a perfect presentation. Let's see if we can do this. You know, we just slide this on here. You can just kind of garnish it with a little bit of chives like this, and then you're ready to go to the next potluck uh, party, right? You bring the uh, asparagus tot with a little vacheron. So there you have it, folks, okay? So we had vacheron. We've used mascarpone. And for this uh, harvest soup of Karen's, we're actually going to use a Gruyere cheese, okay? A Gruyere cheese. Now, Gruyere, come on, baby. 
Oh, it says Gruyere. How about that? <laughs> we got all kinds of crazy things happening. This, this, basically two types. But Gruyere cheese is a yellow cheese. It's made from cow's milk, okay? And it was originally made in Switzerland. This is Swiss. Named for the village of Gruyere in Switzerland. It's hard, okay? But it's also slightly salty and a little, just a little piquant, almost like that's, you know, nice Swiss flavor. When it's fully aged, it's uh, between 3 and 12 months. Not that you need to know that. But uh, sometimes there also can tend to be little small holes in the Gruyere, okay? So don't be surprised if it's a little more yellow and it has little holes like a Swiss cheese does. But it's really fantastic. I love it. So what we're going to do... Oh! <laughs> don't burn the onions. See, now, look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Doesn't that look beautiful like that, huh? Awesome. You can, um, you can serve them, like I said, as a vegetable. I've also have done this, depending on what's in them. This makes a fantastic appetizer, believe it or not. You uh, just have a little appetizer and a little drizzle of olive oil on the plate, very simple like that. Uh, a little green for garnish. Fantastic, fantastic appetizer because the onion is real sweet and delicious. Okay, so for Karen's harvest soup, uh, I chose... Uh, hey, did you see the market downstairs? Unbelievable, huh? I got bell pepper, both green and red. I've got some yellow Irish potatoes that I found down there. Beautiful. They got kind of a little, uh, as you'll see. See that kind of yellow, starchy sort of thing? And then uh, beautiful white corn right now. Got to have garlic, babe. You know what I mean? It's like... You know, come on. Keep it real. Some beautiful, beautiful tomatoes right now, and I'm really finicky about tomatoes, you know. Right now is tomato time, you know. Uh, there's so many out there between the heirloom tomatoes and the Jersey tomatoes I saw just popping up right now that are really tasty, and these are from upstate New York. So you want to rub them all with olive oil. Salt and pepper, 350 degrees. You can even go 325, a little lower, but a little longer cooking time. And you want to roast them until things start happening. You know, the pepper starts, oh, starts getting happy. You can hear it. <laughs> and the corn starts getting this golden color. And the, the potatoes start, I mean, you could just eat the vegetables alone just off of that, right? Just, oh, yes, indeed. So, now, one quick little trick. Do I have a time for a quick little trip? Okay, a little. Okay. How do you take the corn off the cob? Just like this. You see, I have my towel right there so it doesn't go running all over the floor. See, that's a little trick. Take it right off like that. Delicious. A little butter, salt, and pepper. You got it. Corn on the cob, right? There you have it. Now, I'm going to take this and uh, just add it to my little pile and seeing that I don't have a mess all over the place with the, okay, there's my trick. I'm going to start some olive oil in here and start getting all of these beautiful roasted vegetables for Karen's harvest soup. And I'll show you what it looks like when we come back. Stick around. Doc Gibbs. <laughs> I got uh, Karen's harvest soup here, and um, it's just bringing it to a boil now, simmering. What's we, what we're really doing here, this is very clever. We're extracting many different types of vegetables, all of that beautiful flavor, uh, especially a lot of them getting sweet from uh, being roasted, okay? Then um, take a little olive oil, and uh, good olive oil, and then we'll uh, take a little French bread and we'll make some croutons like such. I like to uh, take a little big clove of garlic. How's the tot? Good? Yeah. 
yeah. You're doing all right? Aren't those onions yeah. great? Did you try yeah. the onion yet? Mm -hmm. See, I just like to uh, just... See, some people want to have garlic croutons. For some reason, they take like a clove of garlic like this, right? And they, and they go like this, like... That did something. <laughs> you know, so either rub it or chop it and put it in there. You can rub it like that and it'll do that. Because you gotta have croutons for this next uh, preparation that I'm gonna show you. Oh, this brings back a lot of memories here. Now, the next step. Hey, uh, by the way, um, let's check in here and see if uh, Karen's available. Are you up there, there, darling in the old control tower? Hey, sweetie, Hello? I'm here. I'm Karen? Here. Yeah, can you All hear right. me? I got a question for you, honey. Uh-huh. So uh, the soup goes in the crock. I'm not going to strain it if that's okay, because it's the whole vegetable thing. You all right with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then I was uh, one crouton. Well, I like, to, it depends how big they are, but one or two, if you could fit it in there. And then if I put the grated Gruyere cheese on top, I want to put that back in the oven like onion soup, right? Absolutely. You definitely okay. want to give it a good blast. Okay, thanks. No that's problem. Karen in the control tower. We got it now. Now, before we do that, I added all the vegetables, folks, but I didn't add the garlic purposely, the roasted garlic, because it's roasted, and we're going to put that in there now. And the other thing, I just love roasted garlic. Fantastic. Some days, you know, it's always just four or five heads of garlic. You roast them up in the morning, wrap them up in a little paper towel, take them on the subway with you. It's fantastic little snack then this is that adobo which is that sort of it's like chili it's like a chipotle you know it's got a good kick to it I, I, I kind of like how she put this in here so we want to make sure we get it all out now let's see if we can follow the directions here here we go these are really really good crocs for this type of soup or onion soup so we're going to take the soup now, put it inside of the crock. <laughs> right up to the old top. And then uh, you see I'm using a sheet pan. That way it'll be easy to carry these things. Oh, look at that. Really fantastic. Good thing about these soups, I love soups because, you know, uh, they're even better the next day. What I do is when I make a soup like this at home, Everybody's always worried about, you know, how to cool it. Is it cooled properly? When do I put it in the refrigerator? Is it going to sour? So, you know, I learned uh, many years ago what I do. When I'm done, I let it cool for a little bit. And then, like, in a half an hour, I just go and uh, dump a whole couple of handfuls of ice cubes in here. And it cools it down real fast, and then I can put it away. Because when you're going to reheat it tomorrow you got to bring it up, and you're going to still get that evaporation, right, and the concentration of flavor, so why not? <laughs> you know? All right. So what she was saying, one crouton, if it's small, depending on the size, basically you want it to hold the Gruyere cheese. So if it holds it, let's try one. Oh, yeah, babe. You know what? And I like a lot of Gruyere cheese. I don't like just that little bit of Gruyere. When I have onion soup, or well now this clever idea with the vegetable, uh, and now my mind's going a million miles an hour with this. But uh, when I order it, I hey, give me the cheese, please, huh? <laughs> hey, Karen, is this yep. looking all right? It's looking great. All right, so here's what we're going to do now, folks. We're going to take this into the oven. And we're going to blast this in here. Okay. I got it in the oven, Cam. We're going to see what happens. All right. Now, also, I did this earlier before the break, so don't think that I didn't taste it for seasoning, because I did. You know, a lot of cooking is about layers of flavors, you know, especially soups. So you start with a little salt, pepper, and then you add stuff and you bring it up and bring it up. And then you add a little bit more seasoning depending on what you added. But you got to taste it, you know, to see where the seasoning level is. 
Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. Good. Now, I want to talk to you about another cheese called Cantel. It's one of the oldest cheeses around. Um, it's been known, it's a pasteurized cow's milk cheese, but before I get it technical with anything, I like to do things with potatoes that are a little different. Sometimes I like to add spinach to them. I add arugula sometimes when I'm mashing them. I've had goat cheese. And recently I used some of this Cantel cheese with potatoes for a pot roast that when we come back, I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. Stick around. Watch this. Keyboards, ladies and gentlemen. And how about Lewis on the horns? Sir Charles on the bass. The unbelievable Teddy on drums. Thank you. Thank you. Doc Gibbs in the house. So you want to crank up that oven a little bit when you're going to sort of what the terminology is gratiné. When you're going to gratiné, better known as melting the cheese. <laughs> That would be the Gruyere cheese. And don't confuse that with the Cantel, because Cantel, as I said, is the oldest, one of the oldest cheeses in France. Uh, it comes from the Cantel Mountains. It's, uh, as I said, made from pasteurized cow's milk. And it has a nutty sort of aroma. It's got a little pungency to it. But first, before I go there, let's uh, get our Karen's harvest soup. And uh, this is looking really, really, really good. Hey, Santos, are you around, buddy? Santos. Hello. Oh. Hey, would you do me a favor? Yeah, absolutely. Would you run this upstairs to Karen? Mm. To the control tower? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. We're going to get the uh, opinion here now. Oh, yeah. See when she uh, comes up on the screen. You know, I get a lot of people that ask me on that www.foodnetwork.com about simple mashed potatoes. And this probably goes back, you know, to the restaurants because um, I think we have pretty good mashed potatoes. But there's a reason why you have good mashed potatoes. Partially is the technique and some of it is the ingredients because great ingredients makes great food. So I took these little potatoes and uh, what I basically did is cook them in some lightly salted water just until they're fork tender. See, this would be fork tender. <laughs> fork tender. So that's what it is. Now, one of the reasons why, hello, Karen. Hey, Did you taste it? Well, wait, oh, thanks, Santos. Thanks, right. Wait, hang on, honey. Look good. Steamy. I got a little good bubble there. See that cheese? Look at that. It just goes oh, from the plate to your fabulous. mouth. I love that stuff. Wait, I have to get my mic out of the way. Okay. <laughs> it's great. Good. Super. Good. Thank I'm you. glad you like it. It's great. All right. All right. Fantastic. Now, going back to the potatoes. One of the biggest mistakes people make, they don't drain them well enough. So they have this water in them. So what you want to do is you want to be careful. You want to drain them. And I'm going to show you my trick. So you got to drain them real good. Now, here's the thing. What most people don't do, they don't get all the water out of them. So what I do is I take them, I put them right back on the stove, and I turn the heat up high. And what you want to do, you'll hear it. Let that water finish evaporating there. The potatoes will start getting dry, okay? Let that water just evaporate. You can still hear it. Still water in there. 
So if I want to make the mashed potatoes right now, I'd have really loose, watery sort of mashed potatoes. Let it get dry. Next thing that I do, while they're getting dry right now is when I want to season them with salt and pepper. I can't really see it when it's all mashed. I don't know what to put in there. So, salt and pepper now while they're drying. Then once that happens, we put in a little cream. I like butter in my potatoes, you know what I mean? Right? So we're gonna mash them. Then once we mash them, we let that, just keep letting it go. You'll see, when that water and evaporation starts getting out of there, you'll absolutely see it. Turn the heat down when that happens there, and that's when you can fold in some of this great Cantel cheese. Because when I get done mashing this, I'm gonna serve it with this unbelievable pot roast a la Emeril. You see that right here? Falling right off the old bones. Isn't that great? Hey, it's been fun, it's been ooey, and it's been gooey. I'm Emeril Lagasse, thanks for joining me tonight. See you next time, everybody!